One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maximum brightness. The Hollow Sun electronic power steering. Uh, no, I mean the enclosed pistol sight. Yes, the EPS is the newest offering from Holosun as far as enclosed pistol sights. I guess we can go ahead and call this a replacement for the Holosun 509, but whereas the Holosun 509 had its own proprietary footprint, this runs the standard Holosun K footprint, so it should be easier to mount up on all your special mounts. Pew pew pew! If I sound nasally, it's because I am. I've had this head cold for the last two weeks and I can't seem to shake it. No, it's not COVID. Pew 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 pew! But for whatever reason, I just sound nasally all the time. So hopefully this isn't going to be something that you're going to have to deal with for very long. This EPS is the one set up for the 2MOA dot and the 32MOA circle. I have it only set on the dot because that is my preferred method of running this, but we'll touch on that more in a little bit. Pew pew! Pew! As far as any of you asking how far away the camera is currently from this site, it's roughly 18 inches. Or, in my findings, exactly where my pistol sight would be from my eye when I'm actually running it. Hopefully that'll help you guys paint a better picture of exactly what this thing's gonna look like if you're running it on a pistol. And for you carbine shooters or offset red dot shooters out there, don't you worry, I do pull this closer back to where it would be for a carbine setup. So this way, if you're wondering about what it would look like even closer to the eye, you will get to see that as well. And there's a lot more than that coming up, so we're gonna finish this segment, do a quick unboxing, and continue right along. Pew pew! Pew! Pew pew pew! Help me! Help me! Help me! Hello and welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. Today we're taking a look at the Holosun EPS, or the Enclosed Pistol Sight. This was graciously sent in by the guys over at ArfTac.com. Check out ArfTac.com for all your AR-15 accessories and or some optics. If you do buy some optics from them, please use code CDUS for 10% off your order. And let them know that I sent you. With all that being said, taking a look at the Holosun, it is as standard Holosun as you can get. It comes in the exact same box that basically every single optic I've ever reviewed from them has, with the exception of the HM3X and the 403C combination pack. We have three reticle options, as well as all of these options labeled here. Once we remove the cardboard sleeve, we have a plastic cover, a piece of foam, some silica gel, a user manual, a cleaning cloth, and a business card with a base plate, a standard tool, two different size screws, and alas, the optic itself. This doesn't feel that heavy. As you can see, this tops my scale at 1.23 ounces, which is basically perfectly in line with its sibling, the Holosun SES, at 1.20 ounces. So, right in line, despite the fact that you can clearly see that one of these is already larger than the other. So, interesting. I'm not going to bore you with this being a 16 minute long video. It's a Holosun product. It feels really good in hand, and it looks like it's very well put together. All the components on it have a very good fit and finish. A couple things that I would like to see different, though, are the buttons being on opposite sides. You have the positive and the negative here, and you can trip up on which one's which and possibly press the wrong one. However, if you do press the wrong one, it's easy enough just to move over and press the correct one. That's just a personal preference of mine. I prefer, let's say, negative here, positive here. It's a lot easier to correlate which one is which, but I understand why they do this. It's a lot simpler to put a both buttons side by side and not have to worry about it interfering with what's on the other side, which happens to be our little battery compartment. Increasing the brightness so you guys can actually see what the hell I'm doing. The provided tool removes the screw. There's a little shoulder here. You slide this thing out. Here is your battery. A CR1620. Not that you'd ever have to change this because Holosuns are rated for around 50,000 hours, which is really nice. And before I put anything back together, let's just listen to these turrets real quick. Decent detent, decent sounding click. You don't really feel it as much as you do hear it. This one you don't hear at all. But you can see, with how my hand is moving that it does fall to the detent very well. So if you do have to make an adjustment on this, you can at least feel one, two, 
three, four, five. So if you have to make an adjustments to this, it should be very easy. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get behind this thing and see what it's actually like to use. This EPS comes with the standard suite from Holosun, meaning that this one has a two MOA dot, a dot and a 32 MOA circle, and just a 32 MOA circle. You can choose whichever one you prefer, but from my findings and my personal preference, I run the dot by itself. They do offer this in a 6 MOA dot version, which I think is going to be the one I'm going to get, but more on that later. Not only do you get three reticle options, but you also get three different power modes. The first one is manual, which you could set it to whatever brightness you want. The second is a lockout, so you set it to whatever brightness you want, lock it out, and it will stay there. The third is auto brightness, which works extremely well, but if you're shooting from inside of a closed area outside, it might be a little bit too light for most people's findings, at least it is for me. And of course, the auto shut off and shake awake is basically perfect. Leave it at 10 minutes off and it will never give you a problem. Let's start off with the negatives with the EPS. The first is going to be the tint to the glass. For many of you, this isn't going to be a problem. For me, it's something that I'd rather not see. However, this is on the more subdued side of things as opposed to some, something like, I don't know, a Trijicon RMR, which is so blue it's like looking through a fucking blue marble. This at least has a pretty decent forgiving tone to it and, as you can see, very little distortion to the glass. That's something that we did not see with the original 509. I cannot vouch for the X2 509, but I'm sure it's not that much better. However, with the circle, as you can clearly see, it does do some weird things. The glass doesn't have any distortion, but the reticle has distortion through the glass depending on where in the field of view it is. Off to the sides or up on top, and it starts to pull to one side to mimic the front lens on this thing. I don't know why only the reticle does it and not the image. It's the first time I've ever seen that, but it's something that I do not particularly like. I've been running this thing for around 500 rounds now, and I really do prefer running the dot because the dot doesn't move whatsoever. Running the circle by itself or the dot and the circle does pull me away from what I should be focusing on, which is the target as opposed to the reticle. With the dot by itself, it doesn't change, it doesn't shift, it doesn't do anything abnormal, which is why I prefer running the dot. Plus, I'm just that type of guy. I like just simple dots when it comes to red dots. As far as if you're wondering if you could see the emitter from the front, yes, but to really notice it to a beyond a reasonable doubt, it is so bright that you can't even friggin' use the thing. If you get it down to what brightness you should be using for any given area, you barely even notice that it's on. And thus it makes it a completely non-issue. For any of you wondering what the maximum brightness looks on this thing, there it is. It is a very bright sunny day, and the brightness on the reticle is more than bright enough for basically any environment you'll ever need. I've, like I've said, been running this for a couple of months now and never had a problem. However, like I had mentioned earlier, if you put this in auto mode and you're inside of an enclosed area like this, the reticle gets really, really dark, almost to the point where you can't really see it or use it. So if you're shooting this from under a canopy, let's say, at a shooting range that's outdoor, maybe even indoor, it might not be bright enough. So you might want to set it to auto mode. But the nice thing is, you have the option if you want it. I find myself running this on my home defense slash comp slash range gun in the manual mode around brightness six or seven, and I leave it there. If I am going to be putting it away in my safe, or if I am going to be running in a competition that's indoors, which you'll actually see in a little bit, I set it to the brightness that I want it, and then I lock it out. Because let's say I put it in my holster, I somehow go to clear the gun somehow, and I press a button, and now it's too dim, now I'm not going to have a good reticle. So the option of the lockout, the auto, and the manual is superb. And for all you carbine runners out there that want to put this on a super lightweight build, this is around six to eight inches away from the eye in front of an EOTech G33 magnifier, which I'm also reviewing at the same time. Note that the dot and the circle on the pistol sights are much smaller than what they are with the rifle setup. So if you want to run it like how you'd run, let's say a 512 or a 510, it's going to be much more restrictive on smaller targets with this reticle. It's just the way it is. Happily, however, when the red dot is this close to your eye, there is still no distortion that is easily noticeable. You might be able to pick up a little bit, but ultimately it really isn't that big of a deal if there even is any. It's a much better performance, and I'm very happy to see that Holosun finally sorted this out. And guess what? When you put a magnifier behind it, granted the magnifier and the red dot aren't perfectly high appropriate 
I do ha I would have to bring the red dot up a little bit, you can still look through the thing extremely well. But more so than that, the reticle seems sharper to my eye than most other Holosons that we've seen, and the glass still looks superb. The G33 magnifier, I haven't done the review on it yet, that's coming out after this, but the glass on the G33 is very, very nice. It's better than the HM3X for sure, and here you can clearly see we have a beautiful crystal clear image, despite the fact we have a lot of shadows coming up, again, only because the heights aren't perfectly matched. But guess what? If they were perfectly matched, we'd have a beautiful view through this. So to answer your question that you might have someone out there on the internet in some foreign part of the world, can you put a magnifier behind your Holos and EPS? The answer is yes, and it actually works extremely well. I want to touch base on this in a little bit more of a rigid setup so you can see exactly what I'm talking about with how the reticle dances if you start going side to side or up and down. When you get to the perfect center, it's perfectly round, but it starts to egg itself out on either ends, and it's a slow and steady ramp from dead center. For many of you, this will be a completely non-issue, but for me, like I said, I pick up on these little things and it's hard for me to train around that. I'm just picky when it comes to this stuff. Again, because I could shut off that circle though and have just the dot, it is a non-issue. But if you're picky like myself, just note that you might be better off potentially getting the 6MOA version of this. I'm actually going to reach out to Holosun and see if they'll be willing to trade this in for the 6MOA dot version, or if not, maybe I'll hopefully get one on loan so I could at least test it. If worse comes to worse, I will end up having just to buy it. But I do believe for me, a 6MOA dot on a precision pistol, even on a precision pistol, is perfectly fine. But especially on a home defense gun or a comp gun, you're only talking about a 50 yards, a 3 inch circle, or a 25 yards, inch and a half. It's really not that big, but it should be a lot easier for the eye to pick up. So in my case scenario, again, mine, it might not be yours, it's probably the best of both worlds. Let's get into some quick comparisons. Now, this one isn't going to be apples to apples. It's going to be more apples to oranges. This is going to be with the SCS, or the Solar Charging Site, which is basically set up for a Glock MOS direct from Holosun. This was also graciously sent in by the gentleman over at arftag.com, and they truly are sensational. Once again, arftag.com, use code CDOES for 10% off all your optics purchases. With that quick plug out of the way, what can we deter between these two? Well, there's a couple of key differences. One, the SCS is not enclosed, so that's a big one. Two, it's also a green reticle in this case, and it's actually a little bit heavier by three hundredths of an ounce. Now, I do not have these two cropped at the same distance. In fact, there are slightly different setups, but they're close enough that you can at least be able to paint a picture. Now, would you be able to run either of these on your setup? That's for you to decide, but what happens if you are between these two, let's say? Well, to keep it as simple as possible, if you're running a Glock and it's already got an MOS footprint, go with the SCS. It's honestly a nice little red dot, even though it's a green dot. It's a single button unit and it works perfectly fine. However, it does also have clear glass as far as tint goes, as opposed to the EPS. But the reason for that is it's an open emitter as a closed, the closed emitter of the EPS, so there's less glass in the way. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why you see more tint with the EPS. However, when you get a magnifier behind them, let's say if you did want to run one of these magnified, the EPS is the clear winner. Now, you can see with on the right, I had removed the optic in front of the magnifier to show you that it's not the magnifier's fault why the image isn't perfectly clear. I did not have to do that with the EPS because the EPS is vastly superior as far as lens clarity goes. Our next comparison is going to be with the X1 version of the 509. When I first did the review for this, I was pretty harsh on it because I really didn't like it. And the thing that I liked the least about it is the distortion to the image. As we pan across the targets here at 50 yards, just look at the belly that develops there. It's really, really horrible. I don't care who you are, the 509 standard version sucks. Again, I cannot vouch for the X2, but I remember getting ripped apart with the original 509 review with people saying, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're looking for. Yeah, you're blind. No, it had horrible glass. The EPS is vastly superior. 
As far as the view looking through it, again, the EPS is mounted a little bit farther forward as opposed to where the 509 is currently, so it's going to play a little bit tricky with your eye. The final nail in the coffin against the 509 is when we magnify it. Yet again, with the magnifier by itself, it is a beautiful image. With the 509 in front, it turns into a piece of dog poop smeared across your eyelids. It is not very good. Again, this is with the X1, not the X2, so it really doesn't matter all that much. But if you're in the market for something like this and you come across a deal on an X1, just ignore it. At least get an X2, but again, I can't vouch for it. So, you know what, just pony up and get the EPS because it's got a standard K footprint and it's going to work with more mounts. So, clear winner is the EPS. I vowed to get my pistol permit a very long time ago. And because I live in the great state of New York, a pistol? What? You might be asking if you're in a free state. Yeah, I know. This is, this is my life. But I'm making do with what I've got. So, there it is. Anyway, this is my Smith & Wesson MP competitor, which is going to be the benchmark pistol now for all of my red dot testing. With the exception of the micro footprint, which I am going to put on my Hellcat. I ran about 500 rounds through this EPS and this pistol. I'm new to the pistol, so I didn't really have a whole lot of trigger time on it, so I'm just learning it as I go. But the first time I mounted the EPS on it, it mounted up perfectly fine on the plastic plates, torqued everything down exactly where it needed to be, and I had no problems with it. In fact, I thought I was going to have to adjust the zero on it. I did not have to do anything. It was flat out perfect. I guess I'll just consider myself lucky in that regard. If you're making fun of the Olight Valkyrie that I have on the front of this thing, I've had that for like five years and beat the ever-loving shit out of it and it still works. It makes me laugh when people don't want to spend $90 on a Chinese light, but a couple hundred dollars on a Chinese optic is perfectly fine. Either which way, no hard feelings. As far as any observations I can make about the EPS here at the range, if it's in auto mode, like I had said, it does dim down a little bit too much for my eye. Auto mode is really nice, but I'd like to be able to somehow tweak it to like, okay, if you think it needs to be here, I want it to be here. Um, you can't do that, so it's manual mode for me, but that's the only real thing. Everything else about it is great. Uh, I do have on the top of this gun a little witness hole where the casing is to see if you have a hot chamber. And every once in a while, that'll start clouding up the front of the EPS. And it's easy enough to just take a microfiber towel, go whoop, and it's perfectly clean. And while you're at it, you whoop the back part of the glass. And guess what? It's perfectly clean. You don't have to worry about digging your pinky in there or a Q-tip or clean out the emitter. None of that with the EPS. And it just makes for the entire experience to be that much nicer. Getting into my final thoughts while you watch me make a bit of a fool of myself trying to run my MB competitor in a quote-unquote um, concealed manner. This thing, the EPS that is, is probably the best pistol mounted hollow sun product I've got my hands on. I've only got my hands on probably about four or five, but I've been behind many more than that. But without a shadow or question of doubt, this is the most competently put together one yet. It works the best, it looks the best, and it just works. Like I said, I have 500 rounds through it and counting, and I haven't had a single hiccup. And given Holosun's recent track record, something tells me it's not going to have any hiccups, because Holosun's just seem to work. They might be a Chinese-made optic, but they're priced appropriately. Priced from the mid-3s to the mid-4s, what could you really expect for what this thing offers? If there was an American company making the exact same optic, I'm not talking like an acro, I'm talking you take this optic, you make it 100% in the US or even in Japan, you're looking at at least twice the price. Are you willing to pay that? Me, I probably wouldn't have a problem paying six, $700 on something where, especially if my life's going to be depending on it, to have something I know is made in a higher quality country like Japan, let's say. I'm also very excited, ladies and gentlemen, because I get to mention how this thing works under night vision. That's right, this stage, one of the gentlemen had a Gen 2 PVS-14, and he said everyone's going to have to run this stage under nods. So fortunately enough, I got the lovely opportunity to run night vision behind my APS. And from my maybe two minutes behind it, I found that it worked extremely well. The PVS-14 Gen 2 was pretty beat up. Um, the lenses weren't really clear on it whatsoever. But the glass on the EPS didn't seem to be an issue. 
and the reticle definitely got dim, dim enough that I could see it without having it blossom out and destroy what I'm actually trying to look at, which is the target. Now, there were security cameras that did have infrared lights on it, which did help brighten up the area, but I don't think that really played dividends as far as like a negative against either the EPS or the night vision, but it worked really well. Uh, it's just another reason, another push for me to get night vision. So expect me to get night vision in the next couple of months because I need that superpower. And that's it, folks. The EPS, or the Excellent Pistol Sight, is exactly that. It is really, really nice. It is so nice that it's found a permanent home on top of my MP competitor while I'm not using the gun to test other red dots. It's that good. In fact, it's that good that I gotta get my hands on the EPS carry for my Hellcat, because what I have on there now is good, but it's not good to the point where I really want to have to rely on my life for it. Anyway, a huge thank you to ArfTac.com for making this video possible, but truly, that's all possible thanks to you, my viewers. So thank you very much as always, and see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.